بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <coughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continue on in our series about uh, some of the fiqh and ahkam and ahadith related to washing ourselves uh, related to the Juma prayer and this hadith right here is going to illustrate for us the importance of uh, or or the ruling regarding the imam speaking to the to the to the audience that is listening during the Juma prayer and also what is the hukum regarding people speaking back and replying to the imam on jabir ibn abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala ja'a rajulun wa nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wasallam yukhtub an-nas yawm al-jumu'a fa qala as-salaita ya fulan qala la qala qum fa arka' rak'atayn rawahu bukhari wa muslim wa fi riwayatin fassala rak'atayn fassalli rak'atayn rawahu muslim in this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said that a man came and the Prophet ﷺ was making the khutbah. This is Yom Jumu'ah. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was speaking to the people during the khutbah, you know, giving the khutbah. And he said, the man was going to sit and the Prophet ﷺ said, or uh, the man sat. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, As-salaita ya fulan, did you pray? So and so, did you pray? And then the man replied to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, he said, La, he said, no. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, stand up and pray two units of prayer, pray rakatain. <clears throat> and this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith, there are immense benefits, as the ulama point out, some of the benefits that the Mashaykh have uh, mentioned, for one, it shows us the permissibility of the khatib addressing someone and speaking uh, to someone during the audience if there is maslaha, if there is benefit in doing so, meaning it's not going to disturb the jumwai. It is something for the benefit of the prayer, for the benefit of the congregation, and what have you. And also, it also illustrates for us that <clears throat> it is also permissible for someone in the audience if there is maslaha, a necessity, you know, some benefit to speak to the imam. So that's something we don't usually know because we know there's other evidences which show us that it's not permissible, that you should <clears throat> not even tell someone to be silent during the prayer, that that can uh, mess your jumwa up. So this hadith right here illustrates, it shows us the beauty of the shara, and that when you look at the evidence, it's not that you just take, you know, for us, with our limited ability, especially if we don't even even have the Arabic language, then we have to re rely on trans translated material. Then we can we don't have access to many ahadith. We only have access to those books that have been translated for us, even without the explanations of those books, mostly. So, it's not sufficient just to look at one hadith and make your ruling based upon that. But it shows us the the, the broadness of the shara and the beauty of the shara and the importance of the people of knowledge that they look at all those in the sus, they look at all the texts, Kitabillah, Wa Sunnatul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They look at the various ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the, the ahkam is derived and then they know what is specific and what is general, what is, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, regarding a specific circumstance, what is, you know, when to practice and, and, and so forth in accordance with those texts of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and accordance also with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah and the Fuqaha the, and Ahla Ilm after them. Rahimahumullah Jami'an. And so, again, this hadith shows for us, uh, illustrates for us the beauty of, of, of that and it shows us that, uh, that it is permissible in a, a very... Um, if there's benefit for someone in the audience to even speak to the khatib, maybe there needs to be a warning. It's something very serious. Or <clears throat> that even it's permissible, and I asked the sheikh about this, that even it's it's permissible to make ankar uh, if the khatib is, has some bid'ah. You know, it's something serious. He's making bid'ah to like correct him during the khutbah, but it should not become a circus. It should not become a circus. So you have to look at the benefit. That doesn't mean every time you see a mistake, you should speak out during the khutbah. No. But 
generally it's better to go after. But if there is benefit in it, a maslaha, you know, so that, that takes fiqh fideen to determine when and when not to actual speak if it becomes a serious thing where you need to speak and, and correct because it again, it, it could jeopardize your jumuah. But it shows us also that it is permissible during the khutbah under uh, circum cer certain circumstances. And that it requires uh, looking into that issue with certainty before that. <clears throat> Some of the uh, issues here, the, the ulama, they differed with regards to praying that rakatain. And we're not going to get into the arguments in the, the manakisha that the ulama have mentioned regarding that. Because we see uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that the strongest evidence shows us that although they have evidence for their view but it appears that the stronger of the views is that of course from that hadith and others surihin, that you can uh, the Prophet sallallahu ordered the man after sitting down alayhi salatu wasalam, to stand up and pray the rakatain so some of the ulama differed and they use other evidences to say no like the Hanafiya, they say to that you uh, you can come in and you should just sit during the khutbah because and they use other evidences, so it's not based on their desires. It's not based on the desires of the Imam anyway, Imam Abu Hanifa, and his uh, and those fuqaha, but rather those people who blindly follow, who don't have knowledge. Some of them might you know, and that depends upon the individual whether it's based on their desires or not. But those Imams, they looked at evidence and they had their evidences. But their evidence might not be as, as strong as this evidence because this evidence shows us very clearly that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and after that, then who? Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, stand up and pray rakatain. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered the man to uh, stand up and pray uh, two units of prayer during the khutbah. So that is a very strong evidence and stronger than the other. <clears throat> and so... Um, Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith is it show us it shows us the uh, permissible permissibility of course that there is two that there is two uh, khutbas in Yomu Juma, meaning the Imam makes the khutbah, then he sits down for a brief second, then he gets back up and finishes the khutbah, and they call that khutbatan. It's, it's two khutbahs, two uh, times he's addressing the audience. Another benefit we gain from this hadith <clears throat> is this hadith illustrates for us that it is recommended, you know, to pray two units of prayer as a greeting to the masjid, uh, even... Uh, in general, in general it is. And so that is even, uh, even especially, it illustrates for us that if under the circumstances of the Juma prayer, the Prophet Wasallam ordered to do that, then it makes taqit for us, it shows us that it is for sure, that is a hukum or a ruling that it is recommended to do during all the times uh, to, if you're going to sit in the masjid, even... And the ulama differ regarding the time of Nahi, but this is not the place to discuss that issue and get into depth in those arguments. Another issue here from this hadith is this hadith illustrates, uh, you know, that during the, the khutbah, the imam makes a very brief uh, sitting between the two khutbahs and, you know, as a pause. And then he gets up again and continues the khutbah or makes the second khutbah. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us, and this was the point for us looking into this, is it shows the permissibility of speaking during the khutbah to the khatib and those people he is addressing. That it is permissible if there is benefit. Again, if there is benefit. So it's not just, you know, it becomes a talking discussion place. No, you could ruin your jumwa. But under necessity, under um, uh, if there is benefit, you know, and, and that benefit needs to be determined by those people of knowledge to look at what is a benefit and what is not. But if there's a necessity and there's some benefit, then in, then it's permissible. Another uh, benefit of this is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
it, this illustrates for us that the Prophet والسلام, did not keep silent when he saw mistakes. So that's why when we read a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, we benefit from them and we also see that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, corrected his Sahaba when they didn't know a hukum or when they needed to be corrected or if there was a mistake. So it shows us the importance that we have to correct one another's mistakes. That's not being harsh and that's not being uh, you know, difficult with the people. But rather, that is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you don't want your brother, you want good for your brothers and sisters. So you correct them. Sister, your hijab, is, that's not correct. Brother, uh, you, you should, you know, you should grow your beard because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered that. Uh, brother, you know, you should pray rakatain. You know, you, 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 you advise one another. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the authentic hadith, مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرٍ فَيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِي لِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِي قَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ عَدُوا فِي الْإِيمَانِ The Prophet Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever sees a munkar from amongst you, then change it with his hand. If he's unable to do so, then change it with his tongue. I Meaning speak out against it. If he's unable to do so, then he should change it with his heart, and that's the weakest form of it. Amen. Meaning he should dislike the munkar if you see a sin or something. So we should we have to advise one another. And it depends on the issue that is being advised and the, the state of the individual, their level of iman and their level of knowledge on how you advise them. That takes wisdom and that takes fiqh. How do you is it does it call for being harsh in this circumstance? Or does it call for being gentle? And generally generally the general hukum is that we should be generally gentle. But depending on the circumstances, there are times when it takes being shadid and being strong and stern. And that just comes from the more knowledge we gain and the more wisdom that we gain uh, on how to deal with those situations and the maslaha and the mafsada of it, meaning the benefits and the harms. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also illustrates another very important thing. So we don't want to go to Jawas. The Shaykh mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, may Allah bless him with Jannah of Rados. He said that also this hadith illustrates for us that the person who is coming in to pray in the masjid, they should not pray more than two units of prayer okay because it is also an obligation that they must sit and listen to the khatib so that's very important that we you don't come in and you start making up making qada and making all kind of you know making up prayers you missed and, and things like this or your your you know uh the prayers the extra prayers that you miss and you want it and you, you start making nafila and stuff no but instead you're making tahiyya to masjid and you're sitting and even that should be khafif. It shouldn't be prolonged. You're not like you're standing in the Qiyamah Layl or something like this. But rather it should be uh, very short and concise to its greeting the masjid, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then sitting. And that continuing your worship by sitting and listening to the khutbah and, and gaining the ajr of that and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by that form of ibadah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.